Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Guys, we are, wow, less than eight hours away from the kickoff of the Dallas Cowboys versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're talking about the season opener. We're not talking about practice. We're talking about a real game here. And, you know, it's crazy because I, I'm beginning to wonder if I'm the crazy one here because I keep listening to the talking heads and, you know, the different shows and things. And I'm kind of like, I don't get it. Listening to Shannon Sharp and Skip, Skip, Skip Bayless today, Skip Bayless was literally saying he thinks that New England goes, excuse me, the Tampa Bay goes 17-0. and That they will literally win every single game. That they're going to be favored every game, and they probably will be. And I keep thinking in my mind, now, you know, I've already said, I think the Cowboys get to win. I think the, the surprise of what the defense is going to do, the change in players. I think the raw emotion of Dak Prescott coming back with his teammates, you know, wanting to basically be all out for him. They understand what he means to the team. You know, as you always say, or I always say, you don't miss the water till the well runs dry. And they found out how dry that well gets without Dak Prescott. But I keep hearing all this stuff that, you know, I think Shannon Sharp says he thinks the game's going to be like 38 to 14, that the Cowboys literally have no chance in the world, that they will just be blown out. We know that the odds makers have the Cowboys as the biggest dog this week at eight and a half point underdogs. I still believe, looking at past history, you know, even though Skip Bayless believes that New England's going to go 17 and 0 and then win three more straight games and go 20 and 0 and be Super Bowl champions, my bold prediction is that ain't happening. In fact, here's my thing right now. As much as everybody is on the Tom Brady bandwagon, Tom Brady is still 44 years old. Now, you may call this haterade or whatever. At some point, Tom Brady will hit the wall. Now, last year, it didn't happen. Last year, as the season went on, Tom Brady actually got better. I think he got more used to Bruce Arians' system and the players around him and the natural, uh, you know, uh, the natural ability of him getting better along with everybody else. They got to know each other. But if you'd looked at the last few years, as the season went on, Tom Brady wasn't that same guy towards the end of the season as he actually started out in the beginning. He's still really good. I'm not saying that he's not. But at some point, we can't expect as much as we think Tom Brady will play till he's 50, that he won't hit that wall. And the crazy thing about it is, is sometimes guys go from being great to all of a sudden being punch drunk. You're looking at me like I'm an idiot. Okay. But I'll give you an, a great example. How about this season? 12 and 4. 66.2% completion percentage, 4,727 yards, 39 TDs, a touchdown percentage of 6.5, only 15 interceptions, and an interception rate at 2.5. That's a real good season. 39 TDs, 15 interceptions. Guys. Uh, interceptions are a little high, but, you know, when you're getting 39 of them, it's not like Jameis Winston's 30 for 30. The next year, this quarterback ended up being going from 66.2 to 59.8. Seven-point drop-off in completion percentage. The yards from 47.27 to 22.49. That's half, less than half, okay? Less than half. Touchdowns, 39 to 9. Interceptions from 15 to 17. 
That, my friends, is literally the tale of two stories, or the tale of two cities. That was Peyton Manning, Hall of Famer. Peyton Manning literally got old overnight. I'm not saying that Tom Brady will get old overnight between last year and this year, but you can look at what happens to players. You can look at running backs where, you know, they have a great year and all of a sudden, you know, it drops off. And how long can we expect a guy who is 44 years old, he's only 11 years younger than I am, to continue to play at this elite level? The thing that amazes me as I listen to all the talking heads and everything out there that keep, you know, pounding on Tampa Bay is that they act like Tampa Bay didn't lose games last year. That Tampa Bay just blew through everybody. That it was like a 40 to 3 game every week, but that wasn't the case. Tampa Bay had one game with a victory over a team with a winning record, and that was the Green Bay Packers. When they faced the Kansas Cities, when they faced the New Orleans, they didn't do so good. In fact, with the Bears and that defense that came after Tom Brady, the Bears actually beat Tampa Bay. So as everybody has Tampa Bay as the number one team in the season and going 17-0 and and basically being invincible, I don't think that that's going to be the case. I honestly believe that the Dallas Cowboys have a chance tonight. Most people are basically saying, <laughs> oh, wrong clip. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Wrong one. Sorry. Most people are saying this one. What an idiot! What an idiot! Basically, they're saying I'm an idiot. And maybe I will be. But I go back, and this is where history is on my side. Nobody has repeated the Super Bowl since New England did back in 2005. Nobody has gone the next year as far as I can tell, with the exception of maybe the Seattle Seahawks, of going through, going to the Super Bowl, okay, at least on the NFC side, going to the Super Bowl and winning more games the next year. New England, God, I keep saying New England. God, it's, it's been too many years of Tom Brady being in New England. Tampa Bay will have a target on their back. Tampa Bay, because they are the defending Super Bowl champions, Everybody realizes if I beat those guys, then I'm making a name for myself. That will make me seem like a great team. So you get everybody's best game week in and week out. Everybody wants what you have. And I think, like I said, I think, and I may be crazy, you know, Philly 500 thinks the, the Eagles are going to start out 0-2. I'm surprised he's not saying 0-3 because he played the Cowboys the third week. But I believe that Tom Brady will hit the wall this year and that he won't be the same guy. And that Tampa Bay, the natural thing about after winning that Super Bowl, as much as they say, we had so much fun, let's run it back. Running it back is a lot harder than you think. So we'll see how that goes. Sitting here doing actually a, a pre-test for the set here, we've got all the microphones set up on the table. You can still see I've got the wipes from wiping down the dust. Um, getting everything together. Joe Boo's got his place. We got Joe Boo's rum ready to go. And we are going to be going live, I believe, starting at 7 o'clock tonight. I hope that you guys, as well as you ladies, join us. Because in the end, it may be, it may be that I end up having egg on my face. This is for Tad Prescott, leave me alone. This is for Cowboys fans, I wore your colors, leave me alone in my mentions. This is for guys like Graziano, but most importantly, this is for my arch nemesis, Dominique Foxworth. Oh, egg on my face on television. 